game playing has always fascinated researchers in artificial intelligence. And various algorithms have evolved over time to solve or find the best solution possible to these gaming challenges. Hello everyone, this is Priyanka from Edureka. So let's have a look at today's agenda. We will cover Minmax algorithm, its simple explanation with the help of an example that will explain the working of Minmax algorithm, followed by a hands-on in Python, highlighting the significance. Touching upon the advantages and disadvantages, we will also cover the improvements over Minmax algorithm. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Also, if you're interested in online training certification, do check out the link given in the description. So now let's understand what is Minmax algorithm. Okay, this is used in decision making in game theory in artificial intelligence. And this algorithm helps to find the optimal move for a player. Okay, hold on for a while because we are coming to a very important part and that is that it is used in games like tic-tac-toe, chess, checkers and so on. But we can say that these are board games or strategic games where two players are involved. And here what happens is that in these games, min-max algorithm is being used to find the best or the optimal move that the artificial intelligence should make in order to win the game. So now let us take one of this game like tic-tac-toe and understand how the min-max algorithm finds the best move. And let us understand the working of min-max algorithm with this same example and game tic-tac-toe. So moving on to working off the min-max algorithm. All right, so, okay, don't just freak out by seeing this. This is just what we will be covering step by step and understanding how the move is made by the algorithm. And this is really, very interesting as we all have played tic-tac-toe at least once in our lifetime. Now, the purpose of showing you this chart in the beginning is that, that this game can have more than 26,000 possible games and 765 different positions. So imagine the different space and time complexities which are involved in here. Okay, let's keep space and time complexity apart for a while and understand how does really AI makes a move and decide on the optimal path. So now let's start the game. So we all know that in tic-tac-toe there are two players. One will move X and another one will move zero, right? So now let us take the X turn and this is our current state. So just for simplicity, we have just taken a part of the complex tree. Now it's X turn to maximize the score. And always X will maximize the score and zero will minimize the score. So keep these things in mind, okay? We can see that there are three possibilities wherein X can move, right? So let's look at the first one. So suppose X moves here. Now we see that X just won, right? And if it wants, it gets plus one. So here artificial intelligence just wins. Now let's explore the second space. Now what if X move here? Well, the game is not over yet. Now the player's zero gets the chance and zero will try to minimize the score. And there are two ways the zero can fill the space, right? Okay. So now similarly in the third scenario, here again, the X moves here. Now still the game is not over. And again, zero has two options to move. And now it is player zero's turn to minimize. Now, if zero moves here, then again, the game is not over and next turn will be of X. Now, let's take another position. Suppose zero move here, then again, the game is not over and again, X will get a chance, right? So now let's see another possibility where an X zero can move. So here, if zero moves here, then we see that it's one, right? So here it is minus one. The score is minus one because here artificial intelligence loses and human wins. That's why the score is minus one. Okay. And zero always has to minimize the score. So we are, we are taking minus one. And the another possibility of the move is this one. And what happens here is that we've got another possibility wherein X will move, right? The game is not yet over. All right. So we've got two things wherein X wins, that is plus one. And when zero loses, that is minus one, right? There's another possibility that is of a draw. So let's see that. So now it's X turn for maximizing the score. So now what happens if that is X moves here, then it just wins and the score will be plus one. What if X moves here, then it is a draw and the score will be zero. Another space that the X can move is here. And again, there is no winner or loser here. So the score becomes zero. That means it's a draw. Okay. So now let us just sum it up. Right, and update the score to get the best optimal solution. Okay, so 
at the leaf node or the terminal node, we have got these scores. And accordingly, the above node would be updated. So the maximizing score of x would be plus 1. And the minimizing score will be of 0, which would be minus 1. So the above nodes would have these as its score, right? And similarly, if we go on to the higher nodes, these scores would be updated accordingly. And then the root node would examine that it is x turn and the score has to be maximized. So it will take the plus 1 score and this would be the best optimal solution for this tic-tac-toe problem. So if a player is making this move that is directly filling the space like shown here, then AI has the best chances to win in the first shot, right? But if it chooses another space, another solutions, then there could be a draw or there could be probably chances of losing, right? So this was just a small sample space to understand the tic-tac-toe problem. And now let's sum it up. So with the help of min-max algorithm, we can visualize all the possible moves of the other player. And also, the min-max algorithm evaluates the best moves to take when it is the artificial intelligence turn, maximum score would be chosen. And when it is the turn of a human, then minimum score will be chosen. So now let's implement this game tic-tac-toe in Python. And let's have a little fun playing this game with computer itself. So we are here at our Jupyter Notebook and we will import simple random and we create a class. Now, actually, this code is a little long, as you can see, because we are defining various functions here and also we are defining a class, the instance or the objects which we will call. So here, first of all, we will define like a class instance like object and then we will have the winning combos. We will give define all the combinations of our tic-tac-toe, right? And the winners will be x win, draw and zero win. And again, we will also create various functions for we check game over, whether the available moves are there, what are the available combos, the x1, 0, 1, whether there's a tie, the winner, and get acquired places, make moves, min max, and so on. Like, so this is quite a long code and you can get it on GitHub. So what happens is that when we run this, it is asking your move. So we have these moves, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9 moves. Now suppose I give a move called 3 and I entered it. And then it is saying that the computer is playing. Now you can see here the zero. This is what the computer plays. Okay. So now it's our turn to take another move. So what I do is I take another move and take four here. And let's see what the computer move is. So the computer played C. Can you see here? This one, right? Okay. So now I am here and here. Okay. So this computer can win while taking a move here. So what I'll do is I will fill the space. Okay. So what space is this? It, it is um, seven, right? Okay, that's center now. So after taking seven, it has come here now. Okay, so I can fill this space so that it doesn't win. So this space, I know this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? So I fill this fifth space, I entered it, and it says, congratulations, you win, yay, we won, finally. So this is how we implement this in Python. And we can see our various moves and how computer plays by this super large code. Okay, so don't just freak out. It is simple with just an implementation, not to freak you out. But this is easy once you understand the logic behind what's going on in this. So every move, every possible, this thing can be explored. So this is a very simple example, and that's why we can understand it better because we all have played Tic Tac, right? Okay, so now let's move on further and understand the significance of min max algorithm. So this game really help in practical skill. You play chess, checkers, or tic-tac-toe. So these are the games which really sharpen the brain. It is a very good exercise for your brain. And also that it has been used for educational simulation or psychological roles too. And also the significance of this game is that it helps in strategic decision making. And behind these games, there is min-max algorithm that helps to find the optimal solution. So now let's touch upon the advantages and disadvantages of min-max algorithm. So the advantages, first of all, is that it is complete. It finds a solution if it exists, given that we've got a finite search tree. So you will for sure get a solution. And also it is an optimal algorithm provided that both the players play optimally. So there's also a condition attached to it. And also the decision-making in artificial intelligence becomes really possible and easy with the help of min-max algorithm. And also, it is an exhaustive assessment of search space. So nothing is being left. Every space is being searched and optimal path is being returned, right? 
Okay, so now let's move on to the disadvantages of min-max algorithm. So the first one is that it is really having high time and space complexity. That means the time and space involved in searching the best optimal path is really high. And it has got huge branching factor and this slows down the algorithm because it goes to the depth of the tree and the depth could be really huge and the branching factors really slows it down. And another disadvantage is that the performance and efficiency is really slow due to evaluation of search of all the possible search spaces or nodes or the branches of a tree, right? And because of this, the time and space complexity is also high. So now moving on forward onto the improvements over min-max algorithm. Now there are various algorithms that are really improvement or we can say these are optimization algorithm for the min-max algorithm. So the first one is the alpha beta pruning. Now this is an advanced version of min-max algorithm overcomes some of the limitations also of min-max algorithm and it prunes away the branches that will not influence the final decisions and this will help in reducing the complexity. Now another improvement is a negamax algorithm. This is also known as nega spot and this can be faster than alpha beta pruning and this works best when move ordering is good. So it relies on accurate move ordering. So this is also one of its uh, condition that it will perform good when you've got good ordering on the tree. So these are the improvements of min-max algorithm. And the goal of all these algorithm is to identify all the possible strategies and find the best one accordingly. So that's it from my side and thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!